Do you have 3D prints where you're getting little stringy lines between different parts of it? Or do you have a small print that no matter how you print it, it pops off the bed? I'll show you two simple Cura settings that make both these problems go away on today's Filament Friday. So this stringing issue is the first one I want to look at, and I've been fighting this for a while. If you remember the video where I took this CAD file and brought in the settings into Simplify 3D, it had like 11 millimeters of retraction. That was just ridiculously too high, so I started playing with it to determine what the best settings were. Now if you're not familiar with what retraction is, let's explain the hot end first. So this is the hot end with a nozzle, it's got a PTFE tube going into it, and then the filament goes down the PTFE tube and gets squeezed out of the nozzle, and that's what makes your 3D printer work. But just like a hot glue gun, you know, you squeeze out the hot glue and, you, and then you're done. You let go of the trigger, but there's that little string you just can't get rid of. That's what happens here. When it's printing something and it's done and it moves to the next position, it brings a little string with it. So retraction tries to prevent this by reversing the motor direction that pushes the filament. So it actually pulls the filament out and relieves some of the pressure on the nozzle. So I did a bunch of testing and I found that six millimeters of retraction at 60 millimeters per second, so pretty quick. Worked pretty well for most of my prints, except for these small ones. Well, it turns out Angus at Maker's Muse had the same problem. He reviewed an under three, and he printed the same item, and he was getting stringing, and he couldn't get rid of it. It turned into a Twitter discussion, and a user by the name of Chaz Meister said he had a solution. Angus shared it with me, and Chaz Meister posted his profile. Well, I printed with his profile, and check it out. It fixed the problem. He solved it. But what I wanted to know is what did he change and that I missed. So let me show you in Cura what was the key ingredient that he figured out. Here's the file brought into Cura. I'm going to use my 0.12 layer height and I'm going to type in the search box retract. Now that'll jump me to the retraction settings where you'll see that I used a 6 millimeter at 60 millimeters per second. When I compared his, the only difference was he used a slower speed. He used 25 millimeters per second. And that works because Cure actually does a little white before it moves. So by slowing it down, it got rid of a little extra filament, and therefore there's no stringing. Such a simple little change, and I missed it. So glad he helped us out. If you want to save this, click on the arrow next to your profile name, slide down to create a profile, or update your existing profile, then you can save it. The next thing is this coupling that I've been experimenting with. I needed to print it in this direction, but the footprint is so small that when I'd printed it, knock off the bed. I could not get it to stick. Well, in cases like that, I use a raft. That's just a layer of plastic that gets laid down first, and then your print actually sticks to the plastic, which sticks better than it does to the bed or glass or glue or anything. But some people hate rafts because they can't get them off after. But let me show you a setting that'll make that easier. Here's the coupling brought into Cura. I've already sliced this with my normal method of a skirt around it and right to the bed. So here's the skirt, but when I flip this up you can see the little bit of surface area that's touching the bed. And this is why it kept popping off when I tried to print it. So to change this, I gotta scroll down to bed plate adhesion. Right now it's showing skirt, so I'll click on the drop down and change that to raft. And when I do that, a whole bunch of settings will come up. So let me go through the most important. The first one is the extra margin and that's five millimeters. Basically this is like the radius of the raft itself. Then there's the air gap. This is the most important one. It defaults to 0.3. I use a 0.2 for something like this and it works really well. And notice it's a magic number. Then I come down here to the top layer thickness. Again I change this to a magic number only I use my same layer height 0.12. And then for the middle thickness I use 0.16. Again is a magic number but it's a little bit thicker. And so once I've got all those settings, now I'm ready to slice this guy. And now if you don't see these settings, click on the gear here and it'll pop up this window of preferences and you can check what you want. I just click check all, that way I get all the settings. And that's how you can see this. So now let's slice this and you can see here's the raft after it's laid down. And if we zoom in here close, we should be able to see that air gap of 0.2. And there it is. Now, it won't actually have an air gap because the filament will sag and stick to each other. But when I do this from the layer height, you can see it just starts to print and it shows the air gap. But I'm going to get definitely better adhesion from this. And it should hold it in place. And just to prove it, here it is printing. 
and if you look it's not wobbling it's not moving it's holding tight the raft is doing its job but how difficult is it to remove well because I picked that point too it held but still pops right off so if you get those settings right you shouldn't have any problem so there you have it two curious settings that I hope make your 3d printing experience a little bit easier if you like what I'm doing here click on one of these videos and keep watching if you want to help support the channel patreon or the affiliate links in the description below to buy your supplies filament whatever you need and if nothing else click on that chep logo and subscribe I'll see you next time right here at Filament Friday.